Technology adoption is the lifeblood of the digital economy. In every age, nations gain competitive advantage through improved citizen access to technology. First, it was fire, then iron. This was quickly followed by the moving assembly line for mass production. In this digital age, access to digital technology and devices confers an undisputed Nigeria is beginning to gain this advantage. In 60 years of independence, a lot can be said about development in the country. But the best commentaries must be reserved for the Information Communication Technology ICT sector. 1960 saw Nigeria with only 18,724 telephone lines for a population estimated at 40 million people. Today, the NCC adjudged that there are over 180 million active lines with millions of other mobile devices. Nigeria has made tremendous progress in 60 years in technology, both in the deployment and adoption. Much of the gains have, however, been largely private sector driven, particularly in the last two decades. The last two decades have been particularly interesting, burgeoned by the emergence of three dynamic forces, all in 2001. The issuance of digital mobile operator licenses, approval of the National Information Technology Policy, and the establishment of Zynox Group. It is no surprise, therefore, that the impact of ICTs on different sectors of the Nigerian economy is becoming more evidenced. Like everywhere else in the world, it is charting and changing the economic, religious, cultural, legal and social life of Nigerians. And like every good thing, it started with a vision. A vision by serial entrepreneur and IT enthusiast, Dr. Liu Stan Namdi Eke. A vision to establish a company that will be the leading and preferred source of ICT products and solutions in Africa. Dr. Eke must have heard about Bill Gates' pledge around 1980 to place a computer on every desk and in every home. It would appear that Eke took this pledge to heart and worked tirelessly to make it happen in Nigeria. I had a call on the tech sector and I've been consistent. And if you remember, my first step was to deal with the doubting stomachs, the media people. And it was like an evangelism. Um, if you prove your worth to press people, to media people, because these are the critics of our time, then they follow you. You get to your destination faster. So when I did the whole media houses, transitioning them to digital economy through uh, digital processing, through uh, from typesetting to desktop publishing, computer graphics, okay? and um, multimedia. Then they started spreading the news. But again, we had to enhance that profile to the corporate world so that things, people can run offices with data analytics to guide them on advice, projections, okay, and where they're headed to. Zynox started as a computing firm that assembles and distributes computers and software across Africa but it is today a behemoth in all things digital devices, technology solutions and e-commerce. It is today impossible to talk about development in the Nigerian ICT space without talking about the pioneering role and efforts of Zynox. From the onset, Zynox has always been about access. Yes, access to technology devices, 
access to solutions and access to original technology. In two short decades, the firm has almost single-handedly institutionalized high-end ICT solutions that have moved the Nigerian IT sector to the next level. The firm is at the forefront of efforts to democratize technology for the masses. It started by developing personal computers that suit African needs. It prioritized protection from power surges, frequent power cuts and unclean power. Zynox Group is not just a computer company. It is an amalgam. It is a digital technology powerhouse and enabler. As businesses went online, the company oversaw the launch of Africa's first ever e-commerce outfit, Buy Right Africa, and subsequently launched Udala Limited in 2015. Udala quickly carved a niche for itself by being the first organization to combine an online shopping platform with retail stores located in major cities across the country, with further expansion into other major African capitals. Udala Limited has transformed the average shopper's experience of the marketplace with its emphasis on responsive after-sales support, customer-centric approach, wide range of quality pocket-friendly products, ultra-secure and flexible payment options, as well as efficient distribution system. The firm expanded its portfolio with the acquisition of Conga, Nigeria's e-commerce giants in 2016. With the acquisition of Conga and quick merger with Udala, both companies now operate using Conga's brand identity. They had the advantage of both offline and online transactions and attendant profits. Beyond mainly selling mobile and electronic devices, the physical stores now serve as payment and pickup locations for items ordered online. Walk-in customers are also able to make orders in stores for items only available online. To appreciate the progress that the Zynox Group is making, consider the antecedents of the founder. Zynox strategy roadmap was to build a 360-degree ICT. We have the bigger distribution, TD, TD Africa, in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa, ICT distribution. We acquired a software company, okay, Esputa. Okay, we designed critical software to drive our system. So we've been on enterprise applications for over 20 years in the group, okay? Then we have a solution company, which was the first company in the group, Task Systems, which is uh, supporting the oil companies and the banking sector and the industries, okay, critically. We have a support company, TD Plus, and then uh, we have a lifestyle company called TDI Life, which is into FMCG. Okay, so we recreated FMCG by giving it digital content to it, you know, adding call centers, okay, digital payment for moms and pops, okay, so rating the agencies on behalf of the manufacturers. Okay, food is key, and during the crisis, that company was the biggest uh, distributor, moving goods around and extending credit to mom and pop shops and then uh, uh, departmental stores, okay? And then the mega e-commerce, which is Conga, which is online, offline, okay, with physical stores. And then we have a central bank like Conga Pay. Okay, so we create a seamless infrastructure and then we have a digitally driven logistic company. And then in the group, everything is wired with wireless uh, cloud CCTV. So wherever you are, you are seeing operations nationwide. So what we launched today is a Conga Bulk. Okay, so a platform bringing mega manufacturers and big distributors, okay, to meet resellers. So resellers don't need to jump from about to Lagos, it's delivered to their doorstep and they pay. And then we build the um, tech-driven, secure warehouses across the nation, making it easier. So today, if you are SMB, okay, uh, you don't need to open a warehouse in Poraco. You don't need to have an office because it costs money for you to scale. So we are undertakers. So we provide you an office. Your staff can have an office in a place where there is fiber internet. 
okay there's light there's security so you pay for a portion of warehouse instead of paying for eight security men gardeners sweepers and the full bunch of staff and what are you selling how can you be profitable conga head is taking genuine drugs to the last mile okay so if you are in america and your father it's sick or on daily drug like uh, blood pressure, sugar level, cholesterol. So you don't need to worry. Okay, you open a wallet with Conga Pay, and then every quarter you pay, we deliver the drug to your dad, and then we help your dad if he had the memory challenge. Okay, it doesn't matter his language. Okay, if he has to take his drug at nine o'clock. We call him up at 9 o'clock, he takes his drug, you get an alert that your dad has taken his drug. I will make sure we replace his drugs two weeks before expiration. So he will never be out of it. But genuine drug, cost efficiently too. So we are um, uh, right at 360 degrees, but the biggest project we have now is creating the first artificial intelligence driven robotics warehouse in Africa. So that's the project we are now. We are receiving the containers, we are floating them. Okay, and it's going to sit on 22,000 square meter warehouse in Lagos. That's the biggest warehouse in Lagos. Okay, by Lakey here. Okay, so that will make things easier, seamless. Okay, I'm sure you know robotics don't go to church. Okay, they don't call phones. Are you with me? They don't go to village meeting. So they'll be working 24 hours. The biometric digital revolution in Nigeria can be attributed to Zynox Group. The firm in 2006 delivered the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC voters registration when foreign contractors failed after months of promises. There would have been crisis in the economy uh, if elections don't have facts and figures. And uh, we did that with the DDC and then did authentication with the card reader. So that first of all, before you vote, you, they confirm it's you. Okay, so it's an ID structure. In 2010, the company again delivered the biggest single ICT digital rollout in Africa with INEC with the design and deployment of the direct data capture machines, which helped capture and streamline Nigeria's voter database reduce post-election litigations, and move the country closer to electronic voting. Zynox has since taken this know-how globally. It has helped other African countries revolutionize their electoral processes, most notably Guinea-Bissau and The Gambia, where the company was instrumental in the deployment of the voter capture machines, as well as the technologies used in successive elections and wireless cloud. Zynox is also credited with the largest single e-library and wireless cloud rollout project on the continent, which has seen hundreds of universities and other tertiary institutions in Nigeria equipped with high-speed internet and other digital infrastructure. These rollouts are complemented with solar installations to support erratic power supply systems in Nigeria. Zynox is undoubted the foremost company to go into the uncharted terrain of computer production and ICT solutions in West Africa, the Zynox brand. The company has since etched its name into the world IT history books by notching a lot of firsts. The first internationally certified indigenous computer brand in West Africa the first computer brand in the world to incorporate the Naira sign on its keyboard. The first and only computerized digital assembly plant in West Africa with a daily production capacity of over 5,000 units installed in Bagada Industrial Estate, Lagos. Zynox is currently the only local OEM partner of Microsoft and Intel Corporation in Nigeria the first metropolitan WiMAX solution in Nigeria. When we launched Zynox, we just given an IT identity to Nigeria as a nation. And I said that no, no nation can claim to be independent until you have an IT independent. The company places a premium on its employees, highly skilled, passionate and dedicated. 
Zynox has consistently proven that enhanced IT knowledge and deployment of robust ICT infrastructures are the key drivers of the new economy. Zynox plays to keep. It ensures that it is ready to do the task it has set for itself to do. It is always ready to reach out to the best of the best for partnership. And where what is required is proof of capacity, it is quick to undergo the necessary certification process. The firm is today Microsoft Certified OEM Partner Intel Platinum Status, biggest Intel partner in Sub-Saharan Africa. First OEM in West Africa to attain the NIS ISO Quality Management Systems Certification, ISO 9001-2000. Today, Zynox product range extends beyond the computer and other mobile devices to power generating sets, inverters, and other household appliances. Zynox Group is a firm with an eye on the future. If you watch Zynox anticipate the future, you can see I was like this thinking. Okay, with my body. Eh? Now, I was thinking what to come, and it was after that we bought Conga, we acquired Conga. It was after that we are rolling other things. I just told you we want to roll out the biggest artificial intelligence robotics driven warehouse in Africa. We are already there. I hope after that launching the experience center. What the experience center does today is saves Nigerians millions of dollars. So instead of going to America, going to Britain, going to uh, Dubai, you can sit in there and they connect you to the best experts at the headquarters. You engage with them live. And that's giving us capacity in West Africa and built with integrity, okay, that all the foreign competitors could trust us and they will partner. Zynox is not just about machines, components, and technology. It is also about people. As a socially responsible company, it is no surprise that it is big on giving back to society. At Zynox Group, corporate social responsibility, CSR, is not just talk, it is a way of life. In support of efforts by the federal and state governments to reach needy Nigerians across the country during the COVID-19 lockdown, the Zynox Group committed to feeding over 7,000 Nigerian families for two weeks through its staff spread across the various states. Besides, Zynox did not retrench any staff during the last economic recession, an unprecedented feat during this period. The Zynox Group is also rightly credited with pioneering paternity leave in Nigeria. In recognition of the quality of Zynox products, the European Union adopted the Zynox Elite Laptop as the device of choice for the support of immunization and vaccination governance in Nigeria, EU Sign Project. The choice of Zynox Elite Laptop over foreign brands for the nationwide project followed a keenly contested bid between various local and foreign brands and was based on the system's sophistication, performance and rugged designs. Zynox offers simple but cost-effective technology solutions to help individuals, firms and even government meet the challenges of day-to-day -day living. In line with the massive contributions of technology to the development of Nigeria and the government's current digital transformation campaign, Dr. Leo Stan Namdi Eke has recommended a National Digital Day for Nigeria. Your father did not go to school, but is able to train and feed you. He has done something, but he hasn't achieved what he expected. We are not on ground zero when you look at the power of um, fiber in the country at the moment. Okay, we have excess capacity on bandwidth, but the problem is distribution C cables. Today, the president now is doing virtual executive council. He never existed. He never, no person ever thought of it. 
are you with me? State governments are doing virtual meetings instead of rushing to Abuja. Whether you like it or not, about 25% of Nigerians have become digitally sensitive. So at 60, you are matured of our matured. Okay. Um, it's a way of appreciating the little we have done while also sensitizing people on the need for digitalization. So that's basically what I expected the nation to celebrate, that the banks today are tech-driven, okay, the industries are tech-driven, that people are working from home virtually, the companies have not collapsed. Are you with me? So there are a lot of content and um, news sharing across board that our grandmothers now can work process by sending you tests, even if they are requesting for money. Are you with me? You find that the media industry has grown, that today people can sit at home and produce films without having expensive cameras. If the president declared October 1st as digital independence, it would sensitize Nigerians more. Okay? And that day, Nigerians should be able, few people, students, workers, should be able to talk to him virtually. I was born before independence, and I remember that day completely because we were giving flags, Nigerian flags, okay, small Nigerian flags. I was like a souvenir, okay? So, so what is the president going to give? Give us flag now, that's not the answer. Give us rights now, that's not the answer, okay? But if he could broadcast live, and many people will go, it could be 2 million or 1,000, 2,000, okay? This time block the ministers, but talk to citizens. We have reached that stage, and that will create a whole lot of sensitization. This statement has generated a lot of interest from key industry stakeholders. Chief um, Leon Stan is an important and um, you know critical stakeholder in the telecommunications you know sector, the economy. And coming from him, I will subscribe to this very very important observation you know he made. And I think to do that, perhaps we need to dedicate not just a day. A day may not be enough. Okay, um, maybe two days minimum. You know, but we need to really think seriously by engaging critical stakeholders on what do we intend to achieve by having this day as dedicated, you know, a, a day dedicated, you know, for the ICT, okay, what ICTs have done in this country, what they can do, okay, what they are doing at the moment and what they can do in the future. A national digital day, a reminder for all of the advantages that the digital economy, that the digital ecosystem can play in carrying Nigeria into the fourth industrial revolution is useful. Nigeria's young population is energetic, they're tech savvy, they have a can-do entrepreneurial spirit and we hear about it all the time. A friend said that Nigeria is the most innovative, ingenious and exciting market that he knows. I think Nigerians have done extremely well. So if there's a day to celebrate uh, people like that, to celebrate our achievement and to look at policies that can move us forward to the next uh, stage of development, it will be a very welcome development. It's something that we should look for and especially the digital economy, as the Minister Pantami said recently, that you need four things to, to achieve the digital economy. First of all, you need a, a smartphone, and secondly, you need a virtual account, which all these two, that the citizen himself would be able to provide. But the third one, that you need a broadband. So, and that broadband uh, uh, infrastructure 
is what government should really provide to the people. But finally, you also need the digital identity, and that is the foundation, like foundation for the digital economy. The doctor is a pillar, you know, of uh, ICT in Nigeria, and what he has proposed is, uh, is, is really what we require a long time. Because you, you set a date for ICT, it means you are making people to become aware of what the whole industry is all about. And uh, th that would be good, so I'm calling on the government to support, you know, and uh, um, look at his call and declare a day specific for ICT. It's a very, very good uh, idea. I know that Stanley has been one of the pillars of IT industry in Nigeria, full of a lot of energy to drive the digital community. It's a very good idea, and if we get all sectors, you know, to bring ideas together, brainstorm, I believe we should be able to move forward. Louis Stan is a very, is a mentor, he's a very fantastic uh, uh, person who has, who has pathway and inspired a lot of us in the space. And somebody who has been able to build a system that is a local content, a real local content we're talking about, and also build a very big track record in the space. His footprints are not hidden. And uh, I believe if we look at the concept of the National Digital Day, it's a real concept. We are showing that we should appreciate what technology is doing. We should appreciate, we should create a day for it to be able to like celebrate it. Let it be part of our DNA. Let's not be, let's not think about we being consumers only. Let's not look at from the other angle. We should look at the other, the other side, whereby being part of the utilizers of this space. So for me, we might even have to, if, I, if you're taking a recommendation for me, we might even extend it to a week, National Digital Week. That Mr. Staneke has really, um, you know, poured into the ecosystem and he has supported the ecosystem in many ways. And I think as an entrepreneur, he has also shown that it is possible to build a sustainable um, and globally known Nigerian brand. And I think that this is, you know, role models are the thing that young people need the most in order to um, actually build their own little empires. And, you know, he's also done a lot in terms of giving back to the ecosystem, giving back to young people, helping with policy, pushing policy, um, you know, sort of enabling the discourse with government. So I think that, you know, um, the work that he's done in the ecosystem is highly commendable and, you know, um, I hope he doesn't stop anytime soon. Stress.